when I would go to interviews and I would present my experience that from my own self-employment, what I would find is that many employers would take a moment to dismiss my experience, disregard my experience, and devalue my experience. And I don't think that's right at all. When a person is working for themselves, it really should be valued a lot higher because a person who is self-employed, that shows that they, one, ha can work on their own, two, they have initiative, three, they have passion for what they do, and four, they show a solid work ethic because a person who is self-employed is a person who has to literally motivate themselves to get up and go to work every day. And this is something that I've had to do for over 20 years. It takes a lot of motivation and a lot of commitment, you know, to put together a 400 page book like this um, and, you know, to start the, to start, even start a book like this because to even start um, a 400 page, 95,000 word book like The Temptation of John Haynes, this takes a lot of commitment and a lot of dedication um, to get up every morning and, you know, get it and sit in front of a keyboard and write out the story from start to finish. And it takes even more commitment to sit there and edit the same story um, and get all the typographical, typographical errors, grammatical errors, and sentence structure errors out of that story so you can get it ready for publication. And it takes even more, you know, dedication and commitment to design the cover and do the page layouts and then, you know, get everything ready to get a book like that ready for sale. Um, and when you go to a job interview, you'll have an employer who will just look at that experience and what they will do is a lot of cases, some of them will, even, will sneer at it or a few will just dismiss it. And they'll sit there and sit and act like, your work experience, you know, has no value. And this is what I run into quite a bit when I would go out looking for job interviews. Um, I mean, going to job interviews. They would just come at you and say that your experience has no value and just blow it off. And I feel that that's really, really rude and disrespectful. I mean, I remember going on one interview where this female um, literally was giving me attitude and rolling her eyes at me and just being extra nasty all because she saw SJS Direct as one of my um, work part of my work experience. She, she was like, oh, you have a business. And I listened to that and I could just, I just heard so much jealousy. It just was just sad. Here I am, a guy who really wants to work at, at your organization. And, you know, I'm trying to put the best foot forward. And here you are putting, making your organization look bad by, you know, expressing contempt for a potential candidate. It just showed, you know, an incredible amount of unprofessionalism. I mean, when I see a guy who has done, you know, he puts freelance on a resume, I would, the first thing I'm going to do is go over to Google and, you know, type in the name and see what comes up. Second thing I'm going to do is if, the, if I can if I see a guy who says he published books, head over to Amazon and type in the name and see if it's there. Um, that's all I have to do. Um, but... When I would go on interviews, people, again, they would just be very rude to me, very, very, very obnoxious to me, and sad because, you know, what a lot of people don't understand about, you know, people in publishing is that, you know, the reason why this person is looking for, like, I'm looking for a job is because when it comes down to publishing, the income and the revenue is very slow. I mean, you can publish a book like Your Temptation of John Haynes, and if you're public, even if you publish it, it's not going to sell thousands of copies and you know the royalties aren't going to come in overnight usually there's a 90 day wait process and to for you to, to get any money and it's a long time coming and a lot of people don't understand that in the time that you're waiting for the royalties to come in you know for books like your temptation of don haynes or your isis series books or my new novel um that's coming out on halloween spinsterella um these books take it takes time for the revenue to come in and some and some months you wind up with very very slow sales periods like um July I'm finding is a very very slow sales period and it can be um revenue coming in but you also have bills coming in and this is something that a lot of employers 
don't understand about self-employment. Um, you have short periods and you have long periods. And the whole thing with writing is that when you have those long, those slow periods, you st again, you still have bills coming in. This is where the reason why you want to do this nine to five job. Um, yes, and the whole thing is that I do come into those nine to five jobs with the same passion, the same drive, and the same initiative that I come in, that I approach all of my publications with. But I can't get past the interview process because again, I run into a lot of hostility and a lot of resistance when I would go to a job interview. And I really, it just, it saddens me that I run into that type of hostility and resistance because again, I'm a very good worker. I mean, if I can publish over 50 books for myself and then and then publish books for other authors such as Morris Cherry and a national best-selling author, um, then why can't I work for your organization? Um, I guess that's the question I've been asking myself um, since 2008 when I lost my last job in civil service and you know why are people so resentful of self-employed people? I mean, a person who is self-employed, again, is showing that they have initiative, they have drive, um, they're willing to persevere, and they're, they, if they're doing it for themselves, then my question is, why can't I do it for you? I mean, if this is a person who has pretty much has, I mean, a person like myself has shown leadership ability, because if I can lead myself, and then I can lead others. I mean, this is what I bring to the table in terms of intangibles. And this is what I have to offer, you know, from a professional standpoint. I mean, I also have a college degree in business. I have an A-plus certification as an IT technician. I have a plethora of skills I have to offer employers. But whenever I would, you know, send out a resume or I would go to an interview, again, I run into a lot of resistance when they see self-employed or something like that. And that really shouldn't be. I mean, you really would, I would, should, I should try to hire a self employed person because that person, you know, they're going to come to your job with a, with a whole different attitude and a whole different perspective. Whereas a guy who is used to working for other people, you know, they're going to have somewhat of a bit of a, indif a indifference or a disconnect, you know, to the job. They're not going to um, come approach it the same way. I mean, yeah, they might be somewhat, um, but perceived as more loyal, but what, from what I've experienced in the job market, um, most people who, we, who um, are used to working these days at jobs and have had, you know, worked it full time, they're not as committed as people think they are. I mean, the average job these days only lasts one and a half years, so people are hopping from job to job, whereas a self-employed person, again, they're showing a much more long-term serious commitment. I mean, I've been writing since 1994 and I've been publishing since I've, I've started publishing with a POD company in 2002 and I've been publishing for myself since 2009 and to publish close to 50 titles or I mean or not only close to over 50 titles um, in six years that shows a lot of commitment and a lot of dedication because I'm um, I'm just a guy who lives in the South Bronx and I, I've been doing this running a publishing schedule that is pretty much close to that of your trade house and I the only thing the reason why I'm looking for a full-time job is because again um, sales on books is it, the the the, in, the revenue is not as strong as, 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 as I need it to be and while I'm trying to build up the revenue stream so that it is strong I do need a full-time job so I can pay bills and take care of myself and this is something that I'm trying to do right now and also and it's, it's, it's like a, it's a major challenge because again I run into so much resistance you know from employers who have this perception that you know a self-employed person you know they express so much contempt and I mean I remember what that, that interview I went to um, about two three years ago I mean just this this female just expressed so much contempt towards me I mean because I was working on my own and I've, I've, I've run into it on other numerous occasions you know and the, the complete discounting and dismissing and the belittling not understanding that you know one you're making your company look bad and two 
you're missing a tremendous networking opportunity. Um, you know, you never know when you're going to need someone or when you're going to need the support of someone. And, you know, blowing people off like that is not the way to do things. I, as a professional, you know, if I, um, if I'm in a situation with someone, I'm going to try to keep it as professional as possible. I'm not going to get personal like that because I know that, you know, what I do reflects on the business. And when you have people acting out like that, they don't understand, you know, how their business looks or how they're making their boss's business look by being incredibly, you know, rude during a job interview. Because again, interview is like a two-way process. Not only is the is, is, is the um, candidate representing themselves in a professional manner, but the company is representing itself in a professional manner. And when your employees are acting out at a job interview and expressing, you know, hostility and vitriol towards a potential candidate, it's making their company it's making the company look very bad and it's putting a bad first impression because when I walk into an office and I see the people not acting in a professional manner, that's giving me a picture of what a day would be like in that organization. And if your people aren't acting professionally in a work in a, in a, in a pre-work situation, then I'm thinking that, you know, the situation here whenever there's a crisis or an issue is going to be escalated to another level of dysfunction and that's gonna, that's not going to be you know productive for either of us and this is something that many employers I would run into they just wouldn't think about they just would not think about how they are coming off to employees and they have to really think you know if you have an issue with question about somebody's self-employment um, like myself again Google is your friend and I urge people to go head over to Google and you know you can type in Sean James S-H-A-W-N-J-M-E-S and you're gonna see my blog or you're gonna see my books listed on Amazon or you're gonna see my books listed on Smashwords I even urge you to even go over to Amazon right now and you can type in Sean James and again my books are gonna pop up um, on the search so everything that I say is pretty much what I am. I'm pretty transparent online. Who I am in these videos is who I am in real life and the work that I do um, that I present here in the video is what I'm selling to people not only online but I would like to try to you know sell to people in other areas. I would like to try to distribute to bookstores and things like that. You know I was I did have a setup with that with lightning source a while ago but I was had to um, um, because I, my, my savings had started to run low, um, I was forced to switch over to Create Space. But maybe one of these days I'll put it back up if I can get the resources together. Um, but, you know, people look at employees then. They, they think that, you know, self employed, you know, they think that that has no value, but not understanding that, you know, you're walking away from, you know, a very talented person, uh, a person who would also, who, who's, if they can commit to themselves and they can also commit to you. Now, I know some people will think that, oh, this guy is either he's going to either quit on me or something like that. It's not the case at all. I mean, I have stayed in organizations like Strive for over a year um, I, and I planned on staying in other jobs, but, you know, you run into, again, you run into the resentment and you run into the jealousy and that's one of the big issues you run into because when you, people, when you show that you can you know, have initiative or you have something that you want to do, it really brings out what I find is the worst of people um, in the job market. And it really shouldn't be because we should be encouraging people, you know, to go out and, you know, follow their passions because, you know, a job is supposed to eventually lead to a person going out and doing their own thing and, you know, expanding things. And when that person goes out and expands, again, they're going to look at that employer in a positive way. And, you know, if they start expanding their business, they may, you know, bring it back to that business. And this is something that a lot of employers don't look at. You know, you're, you're, when, you, when you alienate a guy at the interview process, again, it's a potential contact. And if that person goes to work for you, you know, 
that might be another you know a way to expand your business so I just I just really want people to think about that um, regarding self-employed people when they go to interviews um, sometimes the reasons why we like a guy like myself is going out looking for jobs is again because sometimes the revenue stream for your business is you know it's not as stable as you would like it to be so you wind up having to take the full-time jobs until you can uh, so you can you know build things up and you it doesn't mean that you're gonna quit the job when things get built up it means that you may stay there because sometimes you may love that job too and sometimes you you, you just want to um you want to get work experience in other areas and this is something that some people don't look at and they don't see it from that perspective they think everybody you know everything is one way when it's not one way um but when I would go to work I would you know give a hundred percent to a company like a strive or other companies um but you know I did have my other I did have writing as my hobby and I've been trying to turn it you know into expand it into a business and it doesn't mean that I'm not committed to um the job with a hundred percent because again I give a hundred percent of the job but I also give a hundred percent to myself because that's what you're supposed to do I mean you're supposed to take care of yourself and take care of your interests and this is something that I'm trying to you know sell people and get them to understand because again self-employed people have a lot to offer employers when they when you see a self-employed person coming to you again you have a valuable asset you know right in front of your in front of you and you just have to know how to utilize it and this is something that employers really need to think about and this is something I hope I can get them to understand because you know we look at self-employed people who put send a resume somewhere we just and many employers they just dismiss it again not knowing that you know here you have an opportunity to really work with someone who can really help you take your business to the next level because if they're working on a business then maybe they can work on ways to help you improve yours